all good afternoon. You know what? I'm going to adjust my camera real quick, y'all. So just be patient for one minute because I think that's much better. This is what happens when you have to be programmer and producer and all the things. <laughs> So, on behalf of myself and my music director, Billy Randall, welcome to Community of Good Neighbors, Wednesdays in the Wild, and it definitely looks wild outside today. It doesn't have to mean green wilderness. It literally could mean nature at its best. We may not think it's best, but this is what's happening outside. So, welcome to Midweek Advent Services here at Community of Good Neighbors. We are thankful and grateful you are here with us. So much to talk about, so much. We are, I hope that your week is going well. I hope you're finding time to care for yourself, especially with weather like this, or the crush of many holiday seasons. There's so many different cultural and religious observances that are happening in the month of December. And sometimes it can get overwhelming. There's so many ways we have to greet each other, depending on how we walk in our spiritual journey with God. Uh, but it's really awesome, too, to be able to greet one another in our cultural and religious differences and greet with a sign of peace. And that's the important thing I think we, as who follow Jesus Christ, or identify as followers of Christ as Christians, that we definitely should be concentrating on this and, quite frankly, every Advent season. Just a couple of reminders. Um, Pastor Kwame and Billy are both taking vacation time. <laughs> starting the 23rd of December, and we probably won't be back until the first of time later on the first week of January. So at that time, there won't be worship services, um, and there may not be a Saturday service. I haven't figured that out, so just stay tuned. Um, but then we will not have, at least definitely for the end of the month, on the 29th, we will not have worship services here, um, and we need a much needed break. Um, also, um, as you probably noticed, this week, or I'm usually all over social media. Today was my first day and I was outside. So our mobile pan food pantry goes tremendously well. I'm thankful for the churches that have participated and the two churches that are going to be donating food tomorrow and next week. Um, but as I have seen very quickly, there is a huge need. And I'm starting to see a new crop of folks. Um, and especially in this time, even Listening to their conversation today, they were kind of talking amongst each other because these are not strangers to one another. These are people who actually know one another and see each other in the neighborhood and they talk about things being high and things being unattainable. That's the reason why we do this work. And in 2022, we're going to be talking about and focusing on food advocacy. It's important. There's going to be small group book studies, there's going to be webinars, all these wonderful things that are going to happen. All that information will be coming out very, very soon, so watch our emails, watch our Facebook page, um, and just pray about being involved. It's going to be an exciting time. As always, this Saturday is Saturday Night Live at 5 with Pastor Carl May for devotions and time. Um, there's a lot of information also on our, on our Facebook page about different Advent resources. We have Closer to Home by A Sanctified Art, but there are also ones I'm sharing from the Slate Project, um, which is a group that does also, the same sort of ministry that I do, and they're offering some different called Slow Your Roll. Because again, this is the time of year where we're rushing. Um, even today, Billy was running here a little bit late, but he got here. But see how it is, we need to be very mindful that we'll get worship done, we'll get the things done, we'll get the packages done, <laughs> all those things. It'll be okay. We just have to practice a little bit of patience. In the spirit of all those things, let us prepare ourselves for a time of peace and worship. As we're called together, if life was a home, then we would pray. May the love of the foundation, may, the, may God be our cornerstone. May the spirit be the windows ushering light in. And may hope be the walls holding us together. In this hour of worship, let us work toward building that home together. We may not know the path ahead, but Creator is here even now. Let us give thanks for a foundation of love. Let us worship Holy God. As I promised last week, <laughs> I promised last week I would have a second candle. Well, that didn't happen. 
So we're going to light the same candle again, and it's okay because God doesn't require X amount of candles, just the fact that we're doing this. And we are going to reflect on this week. So last week was hope, and this week is peace. And I have learned a trick that told Billy who laughed at me last week. I have learned a trick about when you can't get the candles in there. I know you're all like, wow, Pastor Cormier has fire skills. I sure do. Da! We are lighting our candle in peace. As we reflect on the foundation of faith in our lives, we gather together around the candle of peace. The home that we long for is a home that knows peace. Peace that rests between us and our grief. Peace around our anxiety. Peace between us and our self-criticism. Peace amidst our relationships. Peace at the core of our very being. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. So today we light this candle of peace as a reminder and a prayer. Let it be so. Amen. Rejoicing that God has remembered them. 
For they went away forth from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But Creator will bring them back to you, carried in glory. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys be filled up to make level ground, so that Israel, that all sacred people, may walk safely in the glory of God. The wood and every fragrant tree have shaded all sacred lands at God's command. For God will lead all of us with joy in the light of God's glory, with the mercies and mercy and righteousness that comes from Creator. That was definitely an interesting book of what in the Bible that I read today. It was just very interesting. And I think it talks about the sort of the peace. That even though we cry out that we feel abandoned, there's still a peace knowing that God is watching us and will bring us home and will walk with us in all ways. I've been thinking about a particular verse because I'm thinking about the second week of Advent, and so our concentration is on peace. To heal the brokenness of my people, they offer superficial words. They say peace, peace, as if all is well, but there is no peace. Do they feel any shame for their, their disgraceful deeds? Absolutely not. That verse comes from Jeremiah 8, verse 11. And the reason why I've been thinking about this is because it seems like there is no peace right now. We are so focused on concentrating on tis a season, we are uncomfortable with people living out their truth, or being honest with their pain, or facing their fears and their trauma, and instead we just want our peace. Peace and quiet. We want to put all this pandemic, epidemic stuff behind us, and we just want to relive the old normal and have our Christmas peace, our way of always doing things. We want peace of being shielded from the world's problems, and we only want to feel goodness of the season and the comfort of the word that focuses on the transformative power and, yes, even the magic of Jesus' birth coming into the world. And then we have the gospel this afternoon from the Gospel of Luke. And in those days, out in the wilderness, John received a message from God. John brought this divine message to all that came to the Jordan River. He preached that the people should be ritually cleansed through baptism as an expression of changed lives for the forgiveness of sins. As Isaiah the prophet said, A solitary voice is calling. Go into the wilderness. Prepare the road for the eternal one's journey. In the desert, repair and straighten every mile of our true God's highway. Every low place will be lifted and every high mountain, every hill will be humbled. The crooked road will be straightened out and the rough places iron smooth. And the radiant glory of the Creator will be revealed. Everyone will take it in. Clearly in this gospel, John is reminding us in order to be in relationship with one another, we have to turn towards, return back towards, change our minds, repent. Not as punishment, but as a way to reconnect ourselves back to the one who has always loved us, who the role of relationship and unending love has always been open. So I pose a question this afternoon. How will we then, during this Advent season, repent? How will we be an example for others to leave this charge towards repentance? And I know that sounds strange we're talking about repentance in the midst of Advent, repenting, turning back, forgiveness, you know, addressing our sins usually is a Lenten thing. But how can we be an example to others to lead this charge of repentance and not in the ways that humans judge one another, telling us that we're not good enough, not following the laws accordingly, not traditional enough, not holy enough, not submissive enough, not good enough for God. Because I think that's what a lot of people hear when they hear the word repent, and what's said to them in church when they hear that, and they think, I have sinned, I am broken, I am not worthy. And it's at this time when they hear the word repent, and some clergy leader or someone in the church points a finger and says, you need to repent. Suddenly we feel that we have no peace, and that God has abandoned us. 
But I think the repentance that is John was talking about here, Jesus speaks about in our sacred word, is that we turn away from the narrow-minded, limited understanding of this corrupt version of the world and turn back to our creator, where there's grace and peace and love and hope. Can we leave? Can we leave this world and tell this world as much to repent of turning away from the sins of greed, of hatred, of any and all isms in the way this world no, more correctly, the way the empire chooses to judge people? We as a people sometimes be really invested into the empire. We look for that peace from the empire, not from God, only because we can see what the empire can offer. It's tangible, we can touch it, we can buy it. But the peace that God brings, sometimes maybe the peace is there, we don't we miss it because we can't see, or that we're impatient, or we want this magnificent change. Think about the peace that the disciples wanted. Jesus, who, would, who is in the process of coming in this Advent season, Jesus that is to come, offers to the disciples peace. But they think the peace is destroying the empire, Jesus being on the throne, and suddenly they can live their lives accordingly. Can we think about ways that maybe perhaps we as a collective community remain invested in empire, expecting to deliver on false promises? How can we as Followers of Jesus begin to turn away from the false promises of the empire. Because when we invest in the empire, we're resisting our faith and spiritual journey. Another text this week that we look at is in Malachi. And Malachi says, can anyone live through the day when he arrives? When will anyone be left when he appears? He's like purifying fire and live soap. Like a refiner of silver, he will purify the descendants of Levi until they are pure, unalloyed gold and silver. Then they will draw near to the eternal one. Both this ancient conception of empire, which let's be clear, in Malachi was talking about the Roman Empire for those who were the invaders. And to today's defining empire is the way we define it as colonized and oppressor. Having any hope or thinking we'll find peace in the empire in any of its ways is going to lead us to disappointment. Because the empire is the god of disappointment. So as long as we continue to expect salvation from the empire, we will continue to worship at the empire's feet and we will continue not to find peace. I think peace comes in ways in which are so simple. But that's where we find healing. And the only way as we go through healing, the only way to find peace is to go through this process. Lighting candles, sitting quietly and listening to nature, listening to a hymn, listening to prayers, hearing prayers from those that are loved sharing stories about how we can be one another's peace simply because we come together in community, we share our food, we share our time, we share one another's grief, and we celebrate one another's joys. We want peace. Right now it seems to not be any peace, and we have to also be honest with that. There's turmoil now, and we will fight for peace. And we will try to create spaces for peace. So when people need to run and turn away from the world, they know the places that they can go to to find that peace. Maybe it's in your own living room watching us. Maybe it's in your own sacred community going among friends and family and community. Maybe we can't hold hands or hug the way we want to because we're still dealing with so much. Maybe it's just, it's a kind gesture. I will end with this. Sometimes people are out when they're without family, without community, without home, without anything. They don't have any peace. 
And talking about kind gestures really does mean a lot because maybe perhaps you become someone's peace or you share a gesture of peace to someone so that they can, even though their life is rough, they know that, it's, that they're not alone. My son, who is a freshman at Buffalo State, came home from classes yesterday and ran over to the local Tim Hortons. As he went inside, he knows a woman that had been outside who looked like she was without community, without a home. All she wanted to do was someone to buy her something. My son, who went inside to get two donuts, also bought her a hot chocolate. And he gave it to her. And she wept. She thanked him as she wept. It was cold yesterday. And if that's all the pieces she was going to experience that day, then that had to be a defining moment and such a small gesture. And maybe even through drinking that hot chocolate, she understands that someone does care and will give out the kindness of their hearts. Because having that moment of peace is always what pulls us through. The people inside of Tim Hortons that were working there, however, were not very peaceful, and they actually told my son he could not buy this for this woman. When we're not rooted in the Creator's peace, when we try to find peace in other things, tangible things, human-made things, then seeing a simple gesture as buying a homeless person a chocolate, a chocolate, a coffee, a tea, food, whatever. Our life is in turmoil. I hope that woman finds peace. I hope we also find the peace within our hearts to do the same gesture to someone who is in need, who needs to know God's peace. Thanks be to God.
then we're able to go out and do the work that he calls us to do. And it is at this time that we also have to remember that just as the table has been offered to us freely, without cost, without price to us, because Jesus paid and we paid the ultimate cost. When the table is open to us, then in turn, we should open up our tables to others. We have an opportunity to share with someone, someone who is either having a bad day, doesn't have family, doesn't have a home, doesn't have the opportunity to eat that particular day. Just as God shares the table with us and calls us to the table, so in turn we should do to others. It's the same thing. Jesus called his disciples to the table and wanted to care for them. He wanted to remind them that he would always be with them, but in different form. And so on the night which Jesus would be betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And then he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, here, drink this. This is my blood shed for you and shed for all of creation for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this and remember this. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in the words of the Lord's Prayer.
much for joining us this afternoon for Wednesdays in the Wild, Midweek Wednesday Worship, the Advent Edition with Community of Good Neighbors. We hope that this has been a joyful time for you, that you think about and think and contemplate about peace. Last week was hope, this week is peace. There's still a lot more week than we have left here in the week, but I hope that this brings some peace to your heart and you're able to share God's peace with others. On behalf of myself, Pastor Carly Pitts, and Billy Randall, my music director, we will see you next week. Blessings. <laughs>